Hi friends, Crystal here from Homemaking on the Homestead and today we are going to talk about frugal living tips. I am doing this video today with Joy from She Builds Her Home as a collaboration of frugal tips. Joy has a, a small YouTube channel that she's just kind of getting going on and I really wanted to uh, do something with her to help support her uh, her channel and I, I love doing anything that is a an encouragement and then a support to homemakers and she reached out to me and asked me if I would be interested in doing this and I said certainly sounds like a great plan she is a young Christian mom she has two little boys and her channel like I said it's small so she's just getting going on it and uh, she talks all about all kinds of things homemaking related so when you're done watching my video head over to her channel and I'll leave a link in the description box below and take a look at her homemaking frugal tips for today and maybe even leave her a comment and and let her know that uh, you came from my channel that would be really nice show her some YouTube love YouTube is a tough place to uh, get going in there's literally probably hundreds of thousands of YouTube channels out there so getting recognition and being seen is difficult and uh, even though my channel isn't that big I um, would like to be able to help anybody who's really working hard especially to send the positive message on homemaking and homemakers all right so let's get going on my tips now my tips do not have any particular order these are things that I have done over my lifetime things that I am currently doing now and so I would like to just kind of pass those along as we see prices going crazy and inflation you know really skyrocketing gas prices are obviously more expensive it's cost of food heating all those things and sometimes it's the little things that we can do in our budgets to help save a little bit here a little bit here and together all of that ends up being much more than you than we might even realize so let's get going with my number one or the number one first tip like I said these aren't in any particular order okay the first thing I want to show you is this little basket and what I have in this I have some homemade napkins and I have these white towels I use these in replacement for paper napkins and paper towels now I made all of my own napkins I started doing this literally years and years ago I, I have all mostly cotton type fabrics a lot of these fabrics were scraps and some that I bought specifically to make these my napkins are not very big they are actually 11 by 11 inches is what I cut them out now I have a serger so for the edges I sergered as you can see here and like I said I just use scrap fabric so this actually used to be an apron so <laughs> or was left over from some apron fabric I should say but I would also buy them and I would um, buy a yard and a quarter which would make uh, and I would cut those three 11 inch across 11 inch down and I would end up with nine napkins out of a yard and a quarter of fabric pretty good deal now if you don't have a serger and you want to do this you're going to need to obviously fold under the raw edges so your your um, squares are going to have to be a little bit bigger so you may not get as much uh, from a, a yard and a quarter of fabric as I do uh, it, and if you don't sew at all other options are looking at thrift stores and garage sales and things like that for people who are selling off their na cloth napkins these are not fancy these are not you know dinner party quality or anything like that and they're not meant to be they're just meant to be for everyday use I do buy a napkins I buy a four pack of, of paper napkins from Costco about once a year or so and I only use those to clean my the grease in my frying pan okay let me share about these white towels mine are definitely old they have seen better days I have had these for probably 10 years, maybe more. Let me see if I can get far enough back so you can see. I buy these towels in the auto mechanic section. I, buy, I have always bought them at Costco. I honestly haven't looked lately to see if Costco still sells them or not. Um, but they used to sell them and I, 
I mean, I would get a pack. I don't know how many were in it, but it was it was huge. And like I said, the last pack I bought, they have lasted me well over 10 years. And, you know, they've, they've grayed now. They, uh, you know, the edges are getting a little bit rough and that type of thing. So I was thinking it was actually probably getting close to time to um, replace them. I just haven't done that yet. But when I need a quick wipe up in the kitchen or anything that you might use a paper towel for, I reach for these. And that way I don't uh, use up my nice proper kitchen towels. I just have these and I just um, grab them, wipe up my mess and toss them into the laundry. They are um, not expensive, and so the money that that has saved me over the years has been huge. So it's a great alternative to paper napkins and paper towels. One way that I saved money over the years, and I'm sure I saved a lot of money, we're talking lots and lots of money, is I always packed a lunch for my husband for work. He never went out and bought food. He's retired now, so obviously I'm not packing lunches anymore, but I packed lunches for well over 30-some years for him while he worked, and I got to the point where I got very efficient at it. He had a microwave at work so he could heat up food, so that made it a little bit simpler, but I had plastic containers, and anytime I made anything for dinner, I would pack maybe two or three of those and put them in the freezer, so I always had a lunch ready and available for him. And you know, I mean, it really, it, it would cost me pennies in comparison to him actually going out and getting food to eat every single day. So lots of money can be saved by packing lunches. And the same goes if I would take the kids out or uh, do anything in town for the day. I would always pack a lunch rather than uh, try to buy food for my big family. So the next one I want to share is bathroom related. In fact, I have a couple of those. So shampoo. One thing that I do is, after I've used a little bit of the shampoo, I start adding water to it. And uh, I will add water until I get to the point where I think it would be pointless to add any more because it's too thin, but I, will, I always add water to my shampoo. This stretches out a bottle of shampoo uh, for quite a long time. I think the last bottle of shampoo that I bought, I this one is basically empty right now, but just using it as a prop. But the uh, last bottle of shampoo I bought, I think, lasted me, you know, maybe close to a year because I continued to just, you know, add water, thin it out, keep using it. So this is something that I'm working on and trying to get better at. I have all these miscellaneous bottles. Like I said, this one's got just a teeny bit left in it. Um, this is a bottle of conditioner, shampoos, conditioners. How many of these types of things do you have in your bathroom? Uh, you know, you get tired of a scent. You want something that does something different for your hair. So you say, let me try this brand or let me try that brand. And the next thing you know, you've got all these bottles hanging around that are partially used. So one really good challenge, a very frugal challenge too, is to use up everything that you have already in your bathroom. Um, or, or where it's the same goes for bottles of lotion you know just don't buy any more until you've used up completely what you already have on hand now when it comes to hair conditioner um, I'll just give you this this is the the conditioner that came with the bottle of shampoo that lasted me for uh, about a year however I don't use as much conditioner on my hair as I do shampoo. I use very little. Sometimes I don't use any at all. And oftentimes, like this set, this brand, they came in a set. So here I'm left with this big bottle of conditioner that will take me probably several years to use. And I, But there is another use for it, so which can also save you money. And I use it as a uh, replacement for shaving gel. It works great, and um, it's, a, it's a very good way to use up or another way to use up these bottles of things that, like I said, can be sitting around. Okay, before we get out of the bathroom, I have a tip to share. This is going to be helpful if you have children in the house. I don't do this anymore, but I used to do this. Children seem to have no real thought when it comes to pulling off toilet paper uh, on the roll. So they can use an awful lot of toilet paper, and if you're trying to save money, other than making your own toilet paper, which I know some people do, I 
don't do that. But um, one thing, oh, and I actually got this tip from the Tightwad Gazette, if you remember that book from years ago. In fact, I have it right there on my bookshelf. Um, that This was a tip in that book. So I would take my roll of toilet paper and I would squeeze it like this. I would put it on the, the uh, toilet paper dispenser and it just makes the toilet paper a whole lot more effort to unroll. And I actually felt that it did save me money because a child's only going to fight with that for so long, get what they need and move on with their day. And uh, I, I really, I think it did help. I um, was mentioning it to one of my daughters a while back and she was like, I always wondered why the toilet paper was that way. <laughs> well, that was it. That was my little, can I save a little bit money on toilet paper? Because trust me, when you have eight children, ten people in a house, you go through a lot of toilet paper. So anytime I could do something to save on that, I did. And that was one of my tricks. Another frugal tip I have is regarding liquid hand soap. Now, I normally make my soap, but I was given this as a gift for Christmas, and so I've been using it and really enjoying it, but it got me thinking about uh, how to save money on liquid hand soap. So you can get a dispenser. You can either buy a foam soap dispenser that's all ready to go in the store and then recycle that, or you can buy the dispensers from um, Amazon or places like that. You basically need, for about 12 ounces of, of foam soap, a 12-ounce bottle of foam soap, you basically need about two tablespoons of your liquid soap, and you can put that into the bottle, fill the rest of the way with water, and that will stretch out your soap for quite a long time. Now, One frugal I, tip I want to share for keeping an older house warm. We live in a pretty big-sized old farmhouse, and it has not been insulated other than over the years work that my husband's done on it to put insulation in. We have a few new windows, but pretty much we have very old windows. And in the winter, it gets very cold. We heat with wood, and so it seemed like uh, the, those first years, year or so, we were putting a lot of wood in that, in that wood furnace to try to keep the house warm. All the while, so much of that heat is just escaping through our windows. So many of you might be familiar with the 3M, uh, that's the brand of plastic that has double-sided tape and you put the tape around the window frame and peel off the other side of the tape, put the plastic on, stick it on, and then use a hair dryer to shrink it all up so that you can see through. So we like that concept. The only problem is, is that we had so many windows and that is very expensive to have to keep repurchasing every single year. So what my husband did, because he's a very handy person, um, is he made frames that fit inside the window and he put the plastic, the tape and the plastic around these frames and then he would take a hair dryer and, and you know, heat them up and on the outside of the frame he put a thin you can buy it in rolls, strips of insulation, foam insulation. It's meant to go around doors and things like that. And he would put that on the outside. And then these would just fit nice and tight up against the window. And the frugal part about that uh, is that you can reuse them year after year. Now with children, of course, things happen. And so some years there was always one or two that had to be replaced. But for the most part, we weren't trying to replace all the windows in our house with 3M plastic every single year. And we just stored them in his shop building or garage and, you know, during the summer and during the winter, it certainly kept our house warmer. We didn't have to use as much wood. And if you heat with electricity or gas or something like that, it will really save you a lot of money and add an, a huge amount to the comfortability of your home. Now, this is a tip, especially with these high gas prices, that may be mostly relevant if you live rurally, but even if you live in town, uh, it, it can't hurt. It could save you a little bit of money, and, it, and maybe you already even do this, is to combine trips when you go out into town. I know when I lived in the city, I was so close to the grocery store or so close to the post office, it was it was like no big deal. Oh, I'm going to go run and you know grab a gallon of milk, or I'm going to run to the post office and mail a couple letters. 
So when I moved out to the country, we are 40, 45 minutes from town, depending on where we're going. And it's very you just don't hop in the car to go get a gallon of milk. So usually I would plan one trip a week. And, and during that time, I would get all my grocery shopping done. I would do anything at the post office. I would run any other errands. Over the years, my husband and I started doing it together, which is probably why we still grocery shop together is because we combine trips if he needs to go to the hardware store and I need to go to the fabric store or whatever we're doing we just say we set aside a day and we run all our errands on that day now that he's retired it seems like we do it about once every 10 days 10 to 12 days or something like that but that definitely saves a lot on gas Okay, you guys, as you can see over here, I am currently in editing mode, and this video has gotten long enough. So, I am going to wrap up our frugal tips with that. I still have about three or four tips that I have to share, but I thought it would be great if you guys would share with me your best frugal homemaking tips. And I know there's a lot of experienced frugal ladies that watch my channel and that you have some amazing, awesome ideas. So would you please put them in the comments below and I will go ahead and add those to part two of this video, which will come out in a little bit. So yeah, just let's, We'll do a part two and uh, share some more so that we can all have different ways of saving some money. So thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to give it a like and uh, if, if you found things that were helpful and uh, make sure if you haven't subscribed to my channel that you uh, subscribe if you enjoy my content. All right, you guys, I'll see you all in my next video. Bye-bye. Mm,